Hey everyone, welcome back to Elden Ring. You might be wondering where the hell I am. Uh, I'm here next to the Grand Lift of Dectus. I decided to do this little area off screen and I came upon this tower. This tower, which is not a normal puzzle tower. It just says, may erudition light the way. And I swear I did not look this up. Uh, I looked through my gestures because I realized that we have a gesture called erudition. Um, is that actually going to work? It didn't. What the hell? Bruh. All right. Let's just chill out here. God, I thought I was such a genius for figuring this out. It's not it. God damn it. All right. Well, that sucks. Um, I really thought I was a genius here. Uh, maybe you need to be closer. Let me just try it one more time. I was so sure that this was going to work. It says may erudition light the way. And I used erudition. <sighs> Fuck. Well, I'm very disappointed. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've, I'm very disappointed. I thought I was such a genius. Uh, and I guess I'm not. Anyways, the other thing I've done in the downtime between episodes is I explored Landell a little bit. And I think I found the entrance to the sewer area right here. Now, the thing about the Lane del Sur area is that it's, as far as I know, a fairly advanced zone. So what I'm going to do is we'll take a quick look inside, see what we find, uh, and then decide on whether I actually want to explore this place or not. At least, again, I, as far as I know, there is a section of the Lane del Sewers that's like fairly high level. Uh, it's full of like the, what you call it, the omens. Oh yeah, these things are all over the place. But hey, we might find something useful here. There's nothing particular that I'm looking for, it's just, you know, we might as well keep exploring, keep leveling up if we can. The only other like potential areas we can go to are, of course, the... And this is kind of bad. Of course, the... Oh, come on. Oh, that's the really big one. The stuff with Rykard, who I still... I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Are you kidding? It has an AoE? No. I thought I escaped that too. I almost did. He failed with his grab, but it stuns you for such a long time. Shit. Uh, so yeah, we have Rykard, of course, and then the other option is just to move past uh, Lanedale. Or more, more like more move up to the ghost version of Godfrey. And then Margit or Morgot or whatever. I mean, that's not the only two things we can do, but right now, like, that's the potential. There is, of course, the whole underground, which I've not really explored. And yeah, that's something we'll need to do. I don't know why I left out the underground. There's, like, really no nothing there that I want. But I should be able to, like, fairly easily clear out the areas, especially now, where I'm like vastly more powerful than I need to be. And then, of course, I can't believe that missed. We have the... Oh, I fucking hate this enemy. I still hold out, in my opinion. Ah... <sighs> I still hold that in my opinion, and this is not just for Elden Ring, but for all of the the Souls games. I think, like, upsized small enemies 
just never work. They're always so jank, including these guys. By upside small enemies, I mean like, you know, a rat is supposed to be a certain size. And then what they do is just like size one up to be like a big intimidating enemy. But because the moveset is designed for like the model and everything to be small, it's just so, it's just so jank. It's like the bane of my existence. The giant rats too and like... This is the one that followed me, right? Yeah, I think this is the one I didn't kill. Oh no, this one. Well, whichever one. You know what happened. I'm gonna play it safe for sure. Here, on the third time I'm attempting this. God, it's so... Be any more fucking annoying. <laughs> uh, this game has an ability to annoy, that's for sure. Are you dead? Thank you. It does drop good upgrade materials. This better be worth it. Uh, this better be some like good ass treasure. It's, I think, not gonna be, but. Lost Ashes of War. Is that it's a thing that allows you to duplicate, right? Not worth it at all. Uh, GG's. So yeah, what I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted is, yeah, we still have the underground areas, which I need to do. I think I'm okay for the old palace ruins as well place I didn't fully explore on playthrough one because dealing with those like hanging upside down weird monsters is a bit much I mean I ran through we kind of need to I know that Fia's questline is related to that area oh shit and the underground in general so yeah we need to get on that as well oh hello there Hello there, gargoyle. That doesn't have a lot of HP. Or it's still dagger. Hmm. Why do I get the feeling this doesn't lead to the sewer area? Doesn't look like it, that's for sure. Oh, it put you under Grand Sax. Okay, makes sense. Weird, but then how do you... Well, I'm sure there's an entrance. It's just... I missed it like an idiot. But hey, that happens. I'm not gonna, like, faint if I don't get to the underground. It would have been cool. Anyways, what's Google for, right? If not to look shit like this up we'll get the treasure for sure when it's giving us stuff like this area is generous for sure and I'm getting manhandled okay anyways I'm not gonna beat around the bush I'm gonna get out of here uh, just give me one second because, you know, part of me is curious on where this all leads. Or how this all sort of relates together. And this leads... Okay. This is where the thing would spawn. The, the enemy that I hate. Alright. We need to go to the West Capital Ramparts, I think. I will ascend the branch here and then we can move on oh yeah off screen as well I explored the second floor of the round table oh, there's nothing there really just rune arcs and all this speaking of I've been hoarding rune arcs and I never use one so let's change that 
probably the biggest benefit of using a rune arc is that it gives you more MP. That's like, I mean, HP wise as well, but the, the amount of damage enemies deal at this stage in the game, the level of HP it provides isn't the, like the most crucial. Oh man, it's so easy to just blast everything. Peak mage gameplay. You really gotta put your mind to it. But you know, even with all this, I still wouldn't call this playthrough easy. Again, this game has a way of countering a lot of what you do. And the enemy damage output remains the same no matter how much uh, magic I'm spamming. So, you know, it's still way easier than doing it with any other build, but... Oh, fuck. <laughs> how under... What the hell? Man, the distance was like really weird there. Couldn't tell what the hell was going on. All right. Let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna pop this, and then I think carry and slicer. I have a feeling this thing is gonna be resistant to magic. No. I should be a pro at this because you get so much practice with with Godfrey on his like actual form. And he is one of the boss fights I really like, so, you know. God, carry and slicer is so fucked up. <laughs> it's so fucked up, and I, the other fucked up thing, I realized I just came in here with 48k souls and barely any healing items. Leading to a very, like, suspicious death, I would say. All good, all good. It's it's nothing too bad. That is an easy money boss fight, I think. Hopefully, Morgoth would go, will go the same way. Uh, yeah, why not? Just don't get clipped. I'm terrible at judging distance today, apparently. Huh. Does normal Godfrey do that? The jump attack? I don't know. I don't think this version has like different combos. Right? Yeah, what the hell is up with me judging distance wrong? Fuck, did I? All right. Thought I was dodging there. Must have been stunned or something still again. Yeah, this is no no biggie. The only thing I got to do here is haul ass to <laughs> where I died. Two eighty three. Wonder if I can just like outrange him. He closes the distance fairly well. This is not very smart. With like avoiding my actual magic spells, like he do doesn't dodge or shit like that. 
just his fast. Thought I had the heal. He really keeps spamming that. Careful. Mainly because I'm kind of tired of dying to this thing. Alright, just pew pew. Yeah, easy money. I still like this fight. I'm really curious on how the actual Godfrey fight will go. I feel like that's... Um, the second phase especially will be... An interesting one. I don't know what to put here. Raises potency of incantations. Damn. There has to be a version for that. Like of that for mages, right? There has to be. Holy attack. Raises defense when HP is at maximum. I mean... These are all kind of shitty. Uh, let's go for raises HP. I mean, raises defense. <laughs> like, why not? It'll it'll probably help occasionally. And do not forget to level up. Cool. Let's get to thirty-five and then forty-eight. Listen, thirty-five HP is well very low for Elden Ring standards, but it should hold us for a little while. I mean, I'm trying my best here. <laughs> Holy grease. Six of them, too. And there he is, Mr. Morgant. We'll give him a shot. He is not going to be easy, and I'm thinking I'll probably summon Melina, not even because of the help, but I feel like Melina's summon is a bit of a uh, Tarkus situation, like you can't not summon her. Thematically, she's so fitting for this fight, it's like almost mandatory to have her by you. Even though it is gonna screw me in some ways because, as you know, summons give a lot of extra HP to bosses. Or is it defense? I never know. But they're tougher. Golden Order Principia. These are the weird ones. These are the magic spells that require both intelligence and faith but they're they're incantations they're considered to be incantations i'll probably jump back and give it to turtle bro oh oh yeah there's a black knife assassin here that is the worst spell to use <laughs> it's what i had on hand don't blame me All right, Sekiro enemy, chill out. Did you guys have have you guys seen somebody modded uh, Sekiro style blocking into this game? And they did the Millennia fight, and it's just perfect. It works perfectly, and you know, everybody has had the theory for a long time now, and I fully agree. Looking at the millennia fight that that is a cut Elden Ring boss it it just straight up is there is no one can ever argue with me that that's not a cut Elden Ring boss because yeah it is and looking at the Elden Ring mechanics modded into this game it just confirms it it's like crazy how well she fits into the Elden Ring gameplay and how badly she fits into fucking Elden Ring's gameplay 
But uh, hey, that's from soft for you, right? Somebody had the theory, which again, I fully, fully concur with, that they were working on the Elden Ring DLC, not Elden Ring, Sekiro DLC. And because of time crunch issues, uh, they couldn't, like they had to stop development of the Sekiro DLC and bring the people over to Elden Ring. And they just reused some of the assets they were already creating. Because I'm 100% sure Millennia is meant to be. I mean, she's even a mirror of uh, Sekiro in that she has her other arm as a fake arm. What up, turtle? We're going to give the Golden Order prayer book. He says, unfortunately, he says the same thing every single time. Uh, we have Blessings Boon, Radagon's Rings of Light, and Law of Regression. Heals all ailments and dispels all special effects. Now see, I know about this. Everybody knows about this. Uh, I've cleared this out. Cool. Oh, oh, that's the miracle he's talking about. I thought he had unique dialogue, but he doesn't. So here is the deal. Again, I think most people are aware of this. I never I never know which one. <laughs> this one, right? But if you're not, uh let me blow your mind a little bit. So we have this spell law of regression. Which we are going to explore a little bit. I think I have a talisman. I should. But I don't have one that I can use. Fuck. Ah, that's annoying. The thing is, I don't want to respec because of this. But you probably know uh, there's a statue of America right here. Well, right here being a bit ahead of ourselves, but there's a statue of America nearby. And in front of it, it says, Regression alone reveals secrets. Oh, it's a statue of Radagon. Uh, and if you use Law of Regression, the spell, it turns into a statue of America. And I think the message changes to Radagon is Merica because I don't know how, but in this game, Merica and Radagon are the same person or like part of the same whole or something like that. And whole with a W, not with an H. So yeah, <clears throat> in case you weren't aware, that's the big sort of secret of this game. I mean, they're taking Game of Thrones style incest to the next level where it's not your twin, it's you yourself. I mean, how messed up is that, right? That's Elden Ring for you. Now whether that actually has any big lore implications, I'm not 100% sure on. Oh, you just no, no enemy allows you to heal. Uh, a bit of input reading, a bit of fuck you, here's an attack that covers half the screen. There's nothing there, down there that I need to, but at this point I've committed. So yeah, again, the big reveal is that M Merica and Radagon are the same entity. I know I'm a Vati level storyteller, lore teller, right? And it's interesting. I mean, they always throw some shit in there like this. Some secret. It's pretty good. This is a this is a fun type of discovery, I feel like. You know, sometimes 
I shit on this game for the NPC quest lines. I think rightfully because my opinion is still that with how big this game is, the standard souls quest formula doesn't work because NPCs can just get lost all over the place and you're just like having to look for someone in a massive open world. <laughs> how ridiculous is that attack? They don't stun either, do they? This is still the best option to go for. Oh, what the hell? That is some nutty damage. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous that they can chase down. Ah, I hate this game sometimes so much. I just want to get this over with. For like... 2k? 3k. 3800. Alright. That's still nothing, but... Whatever. Nothing compared to where we are in the game. I don't remember what's over here. Aside from this fucking thing, which I, I still not, I'm still not 100% sure on what to do with. I mean, I understand that it's an invisible little thingy, but I can never hit it. Maybe if I use... Yeah, just come back here. Naisu. I was gonna say that maybe carry and slicer is a bit more of an appropriate weapon. Alright. Here's what we're gonna do. I don't even have a lot to cut out from this episode. I was pretty good with like things to do. We had things to do here. Should we? Should I? Let's do it. Again, I'm super curious. I still have fucking law of regression. Whatever. This is a, a initial attempt to test the waters, so to speak. I think there is like no penalty for summoning in this game, right? What up, Melina? Let's go. This is one of the coolest cutscenes though. I really, again, I'm, I'm a sucker for Morgoth. He's definitely one of the best bosses and best characters in this game. What is thy business with these thrones? Ah, Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies. Man, am I not looking forward to fighting them or her Sekiro boss. And we have to get back to Rikard too. Cool sword, bruh. Looks like the fucking master sword. That thing has like a blade like that. I, I haven't played much of Zelda. That had though. Alright, so this is Mr. Morgoth. Oh, okay. 
This is gonna be. I mean, he's very fast and he has delays up the wazoo. Melina, you wanna actually like start doing shit? Because she's not doing jack shit so far. See now this, normally this is an annoying attack, but if you're a mage, if you don't walk into it, you can spam glintstone comet shards. Is the physic flask, oh fuck. Yeah, he's sort of vulnerable to magic. Especially with Melina distracting him. I mean, she's gonna melt. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was gonna say. That was a bit of a mistake. I itch my nose. Come on, Melina. Got this. She's she she doesn't got this. She don't got this. But I do got this. She didn't survive, did she? Fuck. I'm wondering if it's even that was very easy, by the way. <laughs> that was very, very easy. Uh I'm wondering if it's even possible to have her survive. I've not seen it happen often. And he just turns back into a weird human. For some reason. Maybe he loses his great rune. We'll see about that, Morgoth. Still, you were cool. Um, yeah, that was insanely easy. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah, again, the Melina stuff, I don't know, again, if it's possible to have her survive. Still, there's the Earth Tree. Are we gonna approach it? We are in the next episode. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Listen, you gotta have a cliffhanger. A cliffhanger for a game I've played quite a few times. Well, once on the channel. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Elden Ring. As always, if you did, make sure to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all the usual, and yeah, catch you later.